Thank y'all for indulging me. <laughs> um, I made this I, in the note I passed around. Thank you for also indulging me with that note. I was very nervous. But I made it for my class in multicultural psychology. Um, but I didn't really do it as a very. Oh. Oh, yeah. Um, I made it for my multicultural psychology class. Um, and I never got to present it. And I was kind of bummed about it because I worked really hard. And this is the only time, this is my last class, and so y'all, I have a captive audience. Anyway, so we were supposed to talk about communication styles. And everybody was doing a whole bunch of like, oh, Japanese culture is like indirect, and American culture is super direct. And I've talked about like that culture in that class before, so everybody thought I was gonna do mine on that culture. But I gotta keep them on their toes. I gotta sneak up on them. So I did autism instead, and then I didn't get to present it. So here we are, autism, <laughs> yay. <laughs> okay, we're gonna get to communication in two seconds, but I need to explain two things first. One, wasn't it Asperger's? Yes, but we don't call it that anymore because the guy that made the label Asperger's is a Nazi, and he sucks. <laughs> so, so Jewish people that were getting diagnosed with autism were like, hey, I don't feel comfortable with this label for obvious reasons. Basically, he worked during World War II. He was like, wow, these kids can either be super useful because they like hyperfixate and don't like advocate for themselves well because like social cues or whatever, and they weren't catered to. So he could either use them as like things to make weapons or whatever, or they were just defective and needed to get sent to death chambers, which wasn't great either way. And so people were like, hey, let's not call it this anymore. So then we got autism in 2013, yay. So if you're wondering why it's not Asperger's anymore, it's because Hans Asperger's sucks <laughs> and we do not like him. Anyway, so, hi, I'm autistic. Anyway, I had to learn a lot about this. This is my little chart thingy about my brain. This is a very informal test if you find it online. It's helpful, but it is in no way like an actual diagnosis test. Please do not go around using this. Yes. Is that making your chart reflective of you? Yeah, this is my results. Wow, thank you for sharing. So, basically, what it is, it's like, it was super hard to get diagnosed if you weren't fine and like a white boy that mm -hmm. lined up your little toy cars, which is literally not how a lot of people work. There are more people in the world than five-year-old white boys. Hello, I am neither of those things. So <laughs> I took me a while to come to this conclusion, but we're here now. So it's getting a little bit better, but this is a little slow. Anyway, so. Now you hear about autism being a spectrum. I feel like this is the best representation, which is why I use this test, even though it's really informal and online, because people think of spectrums like linear, but it's kind of like a circle spectrum, like one of those pie charts that have like those sections. So this is mine. Um, I'm not very aggressive, I'm very passive. If you couldn't tell by how timidly I passed around that note to make sure no one would be mad at me if <laughs> I presented tonight. Um, but like, the way my brain works is, this is getting better because, only because of sign language. I'm only getting better at poor eye contact because of sign language and I'm forced to. But I like fidget a lot and I wear long sweaters so it looks like just sweater paws. But no, I'm fidgeting with it. It's, it's only fidgeting if it's not fashionable. Um, and we're anxious and all types of stuff is going on. And like fixations and stuff. Like the way I was super focused on giving this presentation. I did a lot of research for this when it was supposed to be an informal presentation. Anyway, but, so that's my whole thing. You can take it if you want, live your life. It's very fun for me, because this is how my brain works. And when I give it to my friends that are not autistic, they get very different results that are all like in the very small range. And they're like, I didn't know you could get up there in the higher <laughs> like levels of aggression or noise sensitivity and stuff. Like, I understand this is 
probably crazy to say, but I can hear more things than usual, I guess. So most people have like a barrier, I guess, or like there's a threshold kind of. So like between 10% noise, you don't hear it. So like you probably aren't aware of other people breathing in the room because your brain's like, that's not important enough. And it kind of like filters it out. The same way like if you're wearing uncomfortable pants and an ant's crawling on you, you're probably focused on the pants and not the tiny ant that weighs like nothing because you're like, this stupid jeans are bothering me. So, but I don't get any of those filters. So when I, sometimes I'll talk to my parents and I'm like, oh, the electricity is being really loud. And they're like, what are you talking about? And they're like, that sounds kind of crazy. And I'm like, the lights make noise or the outlet, or I can hear how the air sits in the room. And they're like, what do you mean you can hear air? And I'm like, I don't know, man. I wish I didn't know. <laughs> anyway, so that's my thing. Anyway, I promise I'm almost done. Thank you for entertaining me. Anyway, so functionality. You've heard probably, oh, they're high functioning or low functioning autistic or whatever. So this is also slowly changing. This is like a really recent thing that I've heard online, not as recent as like the autism or versus Asperger's name change. Um, this is actually within the past like two, three years. Anyway, so functionality is more of like how people consider or perceive your symptoms, kind of. It's like, oh, you're high functioning, you can make eye contact, you make jokes, you aren't like the stereotypical autistic kid sitting in a corner like overwhelmed by everything. But that's more of like a how People are changing that because it's more of how my autism affects you. Like you don't have to deal with it. Like, oh, you're high functioning. I don't have to worry about you. I don't have to bother you. Or you're low functioning. So I have to like cater to you more. But like both are still autistic. Both are still struggling. <laughs> but it's just how much it bothers you. Um, I realize this reference might not be understood by everyone. However, the same way, it feels the same way to me as um, if someone were to say, not like, oh, you're so articulate for like a black person or like, oh, like you're one of like the good ones. Like you're not like the ones that we see on TV that are like making, having meltdowns and stuff. It's like, okay, just because I'm not bothering you by my autism or my blackness doesn't mean it's not a thing. It doesn't mean I'm less whack, doesn't mean I'm less autistic. It just isn't that pressing to you. <laughs> so that's kind of why some people are using low versus high support needs. So like, if they're high functioning, they don't need that much support. They can kind of like handle themselves, but they might need a little bit of assistance every now and then. Or high support needs that they need to be more helped. But that's like a new thing. So if you don't see it at all, then don't be worried about it. But just thought I should bring it up because some people in my life had asked me why I don't use those labels. And I'm like, it just feels like a hate crime to me, but only because I attached it too much to when people say like, oh, like you're not, you're not like other black kids. And I'm like, mm, I might struggle you, but it's fine. Anyway, <laughs> okay, now we're almost done. I got it, we're good. Okay, so, that is a communication. There's three types or three factors, I guess. So language is very literal. Um, for example, when I, <laughs> I'm learning to cook with my mom, it's very hard. Baking's very literal. And it's like, if you don't put this amount of baking soda in it, you will ruin your entire cake. It will be gross. But with cupcakes, it's like, add a dash, add whatever you feel like. Just, it's some vibes, man. Um, so my mom will be like, cut around something. And I cut in a circle. And she's like, okay, no one cuts food in circles unless they're making chicken nuggets. I meant in slivers. And I'm like, oh. Got it. I don't get the nuance. Around has the word round in it. So it's just a little bit more complicated than that. But fluid body, different body language and stuff, like fidgeting is more common or being in situations that aren't super like sensory stimulating, I guess. And also focus is a thing. Either <laughs> you're super hyper focused and talking for like three hours about one topic, or if something's not interesting, we address and we move on. Not disrespectful, just my brain does not have capacity for that. Okay, great. Anyway, but like for examples, um, like jumping from topic to topic for focus, 
or intentionally dismissing things when you were supposed to pay more attention. Um, or with your body like fidgeting or stemming is what it's called, that's the word. Um, and like eye contact being different, or, like facial expressions. I found it interesting, like for me, it's better to like make eye contact or regulate my facial expressions because there's rules for it. <laughs> and I'm not afraid when there's not rules and it's up to interpretation. Um, so I can just be like, oh, I literally have to move my face a certain way or must will turn into should or have to will turn into need. So, um, yeah. certain words and I repeat it at people and I don't mean to. <laughs> it's just like a thing, it'll get caught in my head. It's called echolalia or echolalia. No idea how to pronounce the word. It's been three years since I figured out what it is. I have no intentions on changing that. Um, or like the way people use language. It's a bunch of fancy terms for that as well that I don't know how to pronounce. That's on there, you can read, I promise. Um, <laughs> but. That's also the thing that you need to be autistic people, and again, being very literal to like, let's see, so. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. If you are um, doing the, I don't know how to pronounce it either, echolalia, yeah. um, and are you cognizant of that as oh. it's happening? If you've said the same word for the fourth time in five minutes, you oh. know that you've used it four yeah. times. I'm aware of it. I usually muffle it or like don't do it when I'm around people, but like, I don't even know if Jimmy remembers this, but like literally two minutes ago, he like cleared his throat and I was like, <laughs> just like <laughs> quietly did it next to him. I don't mean anything by it. My mom hates it when I do it to her because she'll like move something or she'll do something and I, she'll like repeat some words very funnily. Um, now that I've gotten older, she allows me to swear around her, not at her, but around her. And so she, and a lot of people like bother her and so she'll cuss someone out on the phone and I'll repeat it. And she's like, are you mobbing me? And I'm like, I am just, I just thought you said it funny, and so I'm just here. Like, it just sounded nice in my brain. Oh, so it's always, it's something you're repeating that someone else said. Yeah, it's oh, like, okay. or maybe it'll get a word stuck in my head, like if you have a song stuck, and you would just repeat it yeah, over and over again. I I've had it happen to me once in sign language, which was very strange. I did not know that I would happen, but I saw a sign that Ricky did, and it felt good. Um, and I was like, oh, okay. And I guess we're doing it over and over and over. And like two hours passed. And I was driving home and I was like, mm hmm, we're going, we're going, we're going. I forget what. It was lettuce because I thought it looked nice because, like, oh, it's a head of lettuce. And so I was driving and I was like, boop, 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 boop. I'm 1695, boop, boop, boop. <laughs> it's just like, oh my God, lettuce. <laughs> it's so fun. I, it's like a thing. I don't know why. It's a thing. <laughs> um, so that's a thing. Sometimes I like, I like masks because I just talk to Gay with it about liking masks because I just be fidgeting. Like, I just make all types of noise and you can't tell that it's masks, but it's great. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Last two slides, I'm done. I swear I'm done. So, like we've addressed, like stem toys or low stimulus environments and stuff, and this room's pretty chill. I haven't been overwhelmed in here, but there's. I, the class I was supposed to give this presentation in is very echoey. <laughs> it's very, um, it's like stadium seats. It's a very pretty room, but it's overwhelming to stand in and the lights are super bright. Um, and so I talked to my teacher and I was like, can I please have like my headphones on? <laughs> I promise I'm paying attention. There's a light that like shows up if it's on. I'm just using it to muffle the noise. I'm not like listening to music, I'm paying attention. But she was like, okay. But sometimes that happens, sometimes it doesn't. Or having fidget toys, I think, I have some in my bag right now. They're, I keep an assortment of them just to like fidget with, or usually I wear jewelry that I disguise as fidget toys, like rings or earrings or necklaces even. Um, so minimal guesswork, a thing that I like to do is, I'm bad at like hanging out, don't know what that means. But things with like nuance, without rules, it's kind of hard sometimes. So I think I find that a thing that happens with my friends with ADHD too sometimes. So if it's like, we're gonna hang out and I wanna have quality time with you, we're gonna go do your shopping chores. Like take me to a comic book store 
or something so I don't have to sit and think about socializing <laughs> and like what's going on. Like there's a task to do and we will have a conversation during it, but we're, the goal is to help you find the specific edition of this comic book or we're going somewhere. Like I went shopping with my friend today for window shopping. I was like, let's go to every store with um, perfumes so we can smell everything. That was the goal. And we had a bunch of conversations. It was great, but it was like a task. <laughs> So it's like less guesswork of like, what am I supposed to do now with my hands? Or am I speaking correctly? Am I looking at them too long? Is this too intimate of eye contact? Um, and during text, this is a thing that I've seen online only, but there's this thing called tone indicators that I found super helpful. They're kind of like emojis, but without, like with letters instead. So if you're joking with someone and you can't tell their tone, you can be like slash J, which is like slash for joke. And sometimes you think it's not obvious, but if you've ever like had a conversation with someone and you couldn't tell what they meant, I guess, or you're like, is this sarcastic or are you serious? And I don't know what you mean. This happens a lot for me. Then, or if you ask a question, like how does this look on me? Like if you have another intent behind it, or if you are genuinely like, how does this fit? Like, is this a good color on me or whatever? You can tell them like, I'm asking a genuine question, no ulterior motives. There's nothing here that you're not walking into a trap, you're fine. It's just a thing that I've done with my friends because sometimes I'll, it's just easier to let them know like, hey, we're good. The only, I've seen people use them, you can use them jokingly, but you have to be very light with it. Like, I don't know how to explain it. It's more if you write out a full sentence instead of like the um, slang term for it. So instead of like slash like joke or whatever, you'll write, if something's bothering me, I'll be like, this is so annoying, like slash this is so annoying. Like that's the thing. It's like it's just a different way of um, formatting it. It's kind of complicated, but you have to be honest with the tone indicators because then it defeats the purpose of it. Anyway, that's it. Last slide, and then we're done. Thank you for bearing with me. <laughs> Unrelated, I like this picture of the penguin. I think he's precious. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. Um, <laughs> so, one of these, these are the love languages of like neurodivergent people that I thought was interesting that I read one time. So, penguin pebbling is kind of like, hey, I found this cool rock. It's not like a gift, but I just thought you would like it hey, this is something interesting that I thought of you, like when you find a song and you send it to someone, it's like, oh, I, this is a thing you liked, or like this is a thing that reminded me of you or something I thought you would like. It's just like, hey, here's a small gift. It's not like your birthday or anything, just like a, a small gesture. Um, deep pressure is a thing that happens. I think that's kind of the reason um, weighted blankets have become more of a thing recently, because it, I forget what it, I think it's, it's some scientific work. I do not know what nerve it is. I think it begins with an S. Sympathetic? Yes, it's the sympathetic nerve. Um, and it like releases a lot of like stress. Yeah. So like if you give like a really deep hug. What you yeah, and you, like you'll hold someone. Yes, Rodney? Um, my nephew is autistic and um, he's high uh, needs. Um, and he actually loves when you rub his hand and you have to like dig yeah. your finger into his hand it's like his hand his back um even his ears like if you just rub his ears he'll sit there all day and yeah. just let you do it yeah, and i think that's so like it's like oh you love me <laughs> like you're <laughs> sitting next to me yeah. and i get to like hold your hand <laughs> yeah the same thing with me like i hate touch unless it's like intentionally like deep i usually have to initiate it but it's just like a deep hug, like a grab, like I'm about to suffocate. They're like, oh, okay, we're in, we're in for a good time. And <laughs> um, it just like chemically relaxes you, um, like biologically. But so another thing is parallel play or support swapping. Those are two different things, but I had to put them in the one box because the PowerPoint was fighting me. Um, so it's like when you, just want someone to occupy a space with you is parallel play, but it's not like I want to hang out with you. 
even like I need someone to sit in this room next to me. We are both going to study. Do not talk to me. We are just here to have a human connection silently. <laughs> and it's just like there could be light conversation, but it's just a pleasant. I know that there's another person here occupying this space with me, and I'm glad you chose to spend quiet time with me. Um, like a comfortable silence, but both of you agree to it. It doesn't just naturally happen in a conversation. Um, and support swapping. Oh, hello. Oh, hi. Hi. Can I take a picture of this? Absolutely. Okay, I'm not gonna put it anywhere. I can send you the PowerPoint. Oh, all right. <laughs> um, yeah. Just email your class. Yeah, 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 I can. That's okay. A good slide. Thank you. <laughs> um, but support swapping is also like when you, so I, love doing the dishes it's like my favorite chore but i hate starting it <laughs> it's just getting started sucks even though sensory wise it kind of sucks but i like organizing my dishwasher it makes me happy <laughs> um but sometimes it sucks starting it but my friends also suck starting like homework sometimes so what we'll do is we'll parallel play or we'll literally swap each other's jobs and so they'll start the dishes for me like maybe the first three so they're done like the biggest ones are out of the way and I can do the baby ones, or the small ones, I guess. <laughs> and then I would start the first sentence of like their research paper. I'll do the title, I'll put their name and stuff. I'll copy their citations for them. I'm not writing the paper, I'm just like putting it in. So they have to put the work in. And then we'll just swap afterwards. And it's like, okay, great. I don't have to start this on my own. Like it's just support swapping. It's just here, this is something I'm good at, something you're good at, you have it. <laughs> um, last thing input up in which is the entirety of this presentation thank you for letting this happen it's just hi I know something that I care about a lot and I will talk about it extensively um, my friends have taken to PowerPoint nights where we'll have sleepovers and everyone brings a presentation that we're all passionate about some of them are neurodivergent some of them are just here for a fun time and the last time I did this someone was like this is a movie I loved a lot and I'm gonna make you sit down and talk about it for thir th or 20 minutes. And my other friend was like, I love video games and I'm angry about the prevalence of male influence in them. <laughs> and how there's like a less um, like female game um, catering to them, or catering to female gamers. And I was like, interesting. And I talked about color theory and animation and how it influences personality types. So this whole presentation was me and Buddha being about autism because I had to do a lot of research and I care about it a lot because it helped me figure out how my brain works. And I think it's rad because I use some of these techniques with my friends that aren't autistic and they're like, dang, this kind of kind of slaps. It's pretty, it's pretty nice, it's pretty <laughs> nice. Because sometimes they don't want to start their essays and I'm like, I love formatting. I will put your thing in bold at the top of your paper. I will do that unpaid. <laughs> and it's great. So that's it. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, did Wait, anyone have questions? Am I done? Yes, Jenny. A question. Um, the presentation and the video. Yeah. The email to the class. Yeah. I'll email it. <laughs> okay. We're good. Oh, Celine. Question. Is there, if you did see this, a difference between autism with races of like black people, white people, Asian, and so forth? So it's a difference in how it presents, Thank basically. Um, women are harder to diagnose because we mask more. Um, it's more of like women, there's social pressure to uh, um, assimilate is more intense with women men are, and at least in America, are, oh, you can be independent. You can be a different person. You can have your own opinions. You can be very strong-willed. But with women, it's like, you have to be mild-mannered. You can't run around and do all this stuff. You can't be loud. Mm -hmm. um, so for women, it's kind of harder to diagnose. And then also with race, there's, the social aspects of that. So like the things that I wasn't allowed to do or that other people are allowed to do because my parents were like, hey, maybe let's not like, I'm a little worried about you or like. Well, so people say that people with 
of people that are autistic struggle with social cues, which is true. It's not that we're unaware of them. We are aware of them. We just pick up on them slightly different or a little too late sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I'll notice something and I'll be like, oh, okay, I did something incorrectly and I won't do it ever again because with the pressure of me being a woman and also black is like, hey, if something happens that I'm perceived incorrectly, it may be, it's more intense of a consequence than if like a white boy did it. Like if I'm perceived as, if I come up as aggressive because I didn't understand the tone of something, like I'll say things pretty bluntly sometimes and I don't mean to, um, it, I'll come up as a threat and then it's, oh, someone was offended, maybe I lost a job or maybe the cops were called and that's a whole thing. Like, I forget, Ahmad Aubrey was an autistic black boy, and they were like, hey, he's having like a medical issue. Um, and they said the cops, and they were like, he's autistic. If he doesn't follow the rules, don't be surprised, because you come in with sirens, and it's loud, and it's very visually stimulating. And they were like, okay. And they show up, and then they killed him. So it's just, it's a very different thing, because I have to, mass war than other people do so i don't have to deal with the other factors that come with it it's not just getting backlash for being autistic but it's also oh i'm too intense for like my gender role and then also i'm black <laughs> so i'm like okay i guess i'll just sit quietly and exist and not fidget or i'll fidget with something that's like acceptable or not speak or be overly confident i imagine then you probably feel really comfortable um, when having to use sign language. Yeah. Because of what we've learned about how it's so direct. Yeah, know? it's. I'm so stoked about it. I was so <laughs> excited. Because it's like, oh, just, there's no flowery stuff in the middle. It's just very straightforward. Here you go. Yes, no, black and white. Just very clear. And I also love the storytelling of it. And it makes it easier to show my facial expressions. Mm -hmm. And also, the reason I even started learning sign language is because I wanted to go nonverbal. Um, I'm very opinionated, <laughs> but I don't like talking all the time. So I was like, I'll just learn sign language. There's a whole language for that. And then Rebecca was like, you know, there's a job for that. And I was like, what? I'm getting paid to be autistic. Let's go. <laughs> so I was like, I just came here for a fun time. I just came here for my own benefit. I can do this for money? Oh, what? So, it was, so now I'm here and I'm like, okay, great. Like I love storytelling. I just, the way it happened, like I love communication. I study the way brains work in people and I love this class, like interacting with people. But just my brain decided to make it a little bit harder for me to deal with that because I don't pick up on everything. But also, I think it makes my life a little bit more interesting. So I experience stuff differently than other people do. And that's pretty rad mm -hmm. until it's not and then I'm overstimulated. But before that happens, it's pretty fun. Anyway, that's my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Okay,